Hello and welcome to a VO's Journey podcast. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to keep stepping on. It is September 8th, Tuesday. Uh, if you're on the East Coast or you're somewhere around Virginia or anywhere, we had back to school started today, and it's crazy. <laughs> they had a server breakdown and all that jazz. But anyways, I <laughs> want to welcome you to episode 177 of Avio's Journey podcast. And, you know, today we are going to be talking about uh, how to deal with managing your time and making the best out of uh, what you've got going on, whether you have a lot of business or you don't have a lot of business, how to increase that efficiency so we can you know, better uh, grow this machine we are trying to create. All right, let's do it. This is VO's Journey. With your host, the incomparable Anthony Pika. Okay, so welcome back. It's good to be here with you guys. Man, I tell you, I know I didn't do a podcast last week. I'm so sorry. You know, it's interesting. The podcast is always something that I love to do, but at the same time, you know, it's it's challenging because I do so much with the videos that I'm doing right now that, you know, I put all that stuff into the videos. And then when I come to do the podcast, I'm kind of like, oh, I got to, you know, I got to get in the booth because the podcasts are definitely longer, but I, I definitely enjoy them. And I thank you for being um, a, a participant in this podcast over the last 177 episodes. But, you know, I wanted to talk to you today about kind of what's going on with me as always and, you know, how I'm dealing with it and how it can benefit you. I, um, you know, business has been amazing. And what's interesting is, is that as it grows and, you know, part of it is not just the voiceover business because, you know, my voiceover business is doing great, but, you know, the coaching side of my business is grown astronomically and I'm so blessed and thankful and, and humbled by, uh, all the wonderful support and, and people who, have found me and 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 want to work with me. It's amazing and I love it. I mean, it's it's still one of the most favorite things I do. There's nothing cooler I think than, you know, working one-on-one with someone and helping them build their dreams. It's um I don't know. It 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 probably is the most um coolest thing that I can do and I love it. Um you know, it goes back to that time. I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but think in your mind, think about a time when you did something where it just seemed perfect. Like, like here, here, here or, or let me do this. Let me say this. Think back into your mind and hopefully it's voiceover, right? <laughs> but think back in your mind to one time where you did something, right? You were doing something, you were helping somebody, you were doing something and it felt like you would do that no matter what. Like you would do that even if you didn't get paid, right? So like I remember back I was coaching. I was uh, doing some acting coaching and, you know, I was looking back and this was before I started my my business, but I was uh, I was thinking, you know, um, trying to figure out, you know, like my why, you know, if you guys have ever been down that journey about, you know, you got to figure out why you're, you know, why uh, you do what you do, you know, what is your why in life? And, um, you know, I was looking at my life and, and I, I, I asked myself that question, you know, what would I do? You know, like, what would I do if I didn't get paid? You know, like, what would I do no matter what? And what was the, the like, the happiest times that I would continue to do if I didn't get paid? And I remember, and I think back of all the things that I've done, there was this one moment, I'll never forget, where I was working uh, one-on-one and I was coaching this actor and we were working on his delivery. It was um, Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella. And, uh, you know, he was the prince. Nice, nice young man. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, you know, I could, I could, 
I could see in him he had such an amazing talent, but you know he was kind of shy and you know was unable to or or was nervous to you know go all in you know and make that decision to just give it your all because I think he was really nervous or worried that you know people might see a different part of him instead of a wall that, you know, he had to put up like we all do to protect ourselves, you know, but part of acting and part of what we do here is letting down that wall, you know, um, so that, that we can be vulnerable and people can, can see that or hear that. So anyways, working with him one-on-one, you know, in that moment. And then, you know, with the, with us, with our female actress who was Cinderella and working with the two of them together, it was, it was so uh, amazing to coach them and to see their growth. And, uh, you know, he became, uh, well, for, first of all, he did a fantastic job in the show. And then he actually went and joined um, the the Marines. And uh, he has a family now and just an amazing young man. And uh, I am uh, was humbled and blessed to, you know, just be a small, small blip in his life. But I... I I I felt in that those that moment in those moments like that I don't know just like that's where I belonged. Do you know? And as I do my business here, you know, doing voiceovers gives me that feeling, right, of being able to you know, communicate with people and, you know, connect with them. But as you can tell, you know, it's challenging, right? It's challenging because we're in a booth. We're by ourselves. It can be lonely. I remember when I went full time, it was really cool because, you know, I was I was I remember and I think I filmed it, too. And I did some episodes where I was like, you know, I retired from my job. It's it's amazing. You know, I, I come, you know, I met that goal that I had set that we had followed, you know, on this podcast and, you know, that I was going to go full time as a voice actor. And you know, I remember thinking, waking up afterwards thinking, gosh, what, you know, like, I mean, it's such an amazing feeling of freedom. Right. But I think as time went on, uh, there was an unexpected, like there was an adverse effect or like a, you know, an unexpected side effect. I mean, of being alone, you know, because at the time, now this was pre COVID, right at the time, you know, my wife wasn't home. The kids would go to school. You know what I mean? So I would just be alone with the cat. That was before we got our dog. <laughs> and, you know, it was, uh, it was wonderful. But at the same time, it was also, it also became really lonely, right? Like, cause you know, I, I do love working with people. I love being around people. Um, so anyways, you know, my coaching business, uh, it just has been a blessing um, on so many levels, and it has been amazing because I get to interact with so many people. You know, now with Fiverr Elite, we meet two times a week on Wednesdays, you know, and Saturdays, and it's so amazing to meet with that group of people and work with them and and get to communicate with them and talk to them in large group settings. And then now, you know, I have um, many, uh, many a lot of uh, mentory students, which is so, again, humbling and it's a blessing. Uh, and, you know, I work one-on-one with them on a weekly basis and it is, uh, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I love it um, because I get to, you know, help people directly do voiceover, which we all love, you know, and it, it, it's, it doesn't get better than this. So, to go to this whole <laughs> this whole opening monologue, the reason I bring this up is because I think when you truly love something, right? Uh, when you truly love something and it and it truly fits, okay. If you work hard and long enough at it, it you're going to succeed at it. And you know, as you succeed, you get busier, <laughs> and that is a good thing. But what's interesting is is, and I want to tell you that everybody this too. No matter at what level you are, there's always going to be new challenges. Right. Whether you're just starting out, maybe your challenge is to try to figure out, you know, my audio just doesn't sound right. Or, you know, you're trying to figure out how do I get more work? How do I, you know, do this, do that? How do I move faster? You know, I get questions asked all the time about how do I move quicker with my um, DAW and my editing and stuff like that. And but then there's also as you go along and you start getting lots of clients, then it becomes well, this is amazing and I've got all this business, but now like how, how do I manage my time? Now I see my my family less than I did before 
I even started this job, you know, and I work with many people in that situation too. And, you know, for me, uh, it's incredible the growth that Avio's journey uh, has had over the last, I mean, honest, honestly speaking, over the last six to eight months, you know, the growth has been, in, has been astronomical uh, from the coaching side. It has been a nice steady growth for the voiceover side, but the coaching side has been, you know, really high. And, um, you know, in all fairness, I do a lot of that teaching. So I think that's a big reason why the, the coaching business grows a lot too. Um, you know, cause I put out a lot of this content for that, but what I'm finding is that it definitely becomes a challenge for all of us, you know, whether you're busy, uh, with, with trying to figure out your audio or whether you're busy trying to, you know, handle everything that we have to handle with families and, and all the stuff going on right now. And also trying to learn how to do this, try to get, you know, get clients, trying to, structure your time correctly, it becomes very daunting and it can be a challenge. And I think effective time management efficiency can change your business. Uh, it's amazing. And, and, and I have to tell you, you know, there's so many different places to be efficient at, but I want to just kind of uh, plant the seed in your mind about McDonald's. <laughs> hey, you probably didn't see that coming. You're like, McDonald's? What in the heck, Anthony? Um, and the reason why I want to tell you about McDonald's is because, you know, McDonald's, if you take a look at overall from a business standpoint, McDonald's is probably one of the most revolutionary business models ever created. Okay. And of course, it's the franchise effect that I'm talking about. And the reason why I'm talking about this franchise effect is because, you know, McDonald's created this system that allowed people to duplicate, all right, something great. Now, you've heard me talk about this before in other, other ways, but to be able, they, they were able to create a repeatable process, a repeatable process, okay, that generated predictable outcomes, Okay, a repeatable process that generated pre, uh, predictable outcomes. Write that down, <laughs> right? Not if you're driving, <laughs> but write that down, okay? Because that is a big part of our business and our salvation, all right, from not just creating an incredible job, okay? Because you might feel, sometimes you might feel, well, I'm, I feel like I'm creating a job, right? Um, because there's a lot of work that goes into our business that we probably, there's some we don't like and we got to do it. But what I'm trying to say is, is that this franchise model, this idea of building systems, okay, that helps you create something over and over again that delivers the same quality, uh, an expected outcome, okay, a predictable outcome. That's what every good business all right, tries to strive for. Now, it, it doesn't matter what business we're in. Of course, you know, McDonald's is in the hamburger business or the real estate business, depending on who you talk to, right? Um, but the idea is, is that this business model, this franchise model can be applied to any business, okay? And if perfect example, if we look at Fiverr, all right. Think about this. Think about Fiverr. Fiverr is a, is a perfect kind of franchise model, right? Uh, meaning that you know they have a system where they've created a platform, okay, that uh, you know brings in by by running digital ads and things. They bring in business. They have other people, aka us contractors, do the work. They manage the site, okay, and they take a percentage of what we make. I mean, it's exactly the franchise model, right, on steroids <laughs> from uh, – just because, you know, um, McDonald's owns – so when you when you buy a McDonald's, right, you, you own 96% of – of the that McDonald's and then McDonald's owns 4% of it and then also they own the land, right? They own the land. So think about Fiverr, right? Fiverr owns 
the Fiverr name in the website. They own the land and they take 20% of whatever we earn. Okay. Uh, it's the same sort of model. Now, where I'm going with this with our business is that we to, to start to think in this mindset of how do I create something that that can be repeatable and not just that. Here's another example. Here's another thing to think about. If you were to sell your business tomorrow, think about this. If you were to sell your voiceover business tomorrow and someone came along and they're like, okay, I want to buy it. They, they pay you however much money you charge for it. And then they're supposed to start running it, okay? And they want to have the same success that you have or, you know, the 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 success they, they want from running the business they purchase from you. Well, you need to hand them a manual, right? You need to hand them a manual, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that. These are the, you know, the 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 systems I created so that you can just fill in, all right, and continue to do so. Now, of course, with any business, there is, you know, there are certain um, people that you need to hire, okay, in order to fulfill that particular role, in this case, voiceover artist. But as you know, I mean, look at what Fiverr does. There's plenty of voiceover artists. We know that. There's plenty of voiceover artists or, or other people in the world who can be talented. And and But if you take a step back and you look at McDonald's, we all could admit, right? We all admit that we can make a better hamburger than McDonald's. We know that. All right, we all know we could go home and barbecue a better hamburger than that. However, what's incredible is that you can go anywhere and get the same you can you can get the same the same hamburger, the same uh the same french fry. Everything is predictable. Okay? Everything is the same. And 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 it's always that way. I mean, it's incredible, right? And on top of that, the system that they've created, they can stick anyone into the system. Sure, there needs to be training and everything, right? But but there's a system that they can stick anyone. We know that. You know, there's young kids that work at McDonald's. I mean, you know, and, and granted, they, they could work on their customer service. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, it's incredible because you could just fill people in. They have, you know, they, they don't need an education, they don't need much of anything. All they need to do is be able to follow the system that was created. That's powerful. So for you and I, our goal should not only be able to not not to just to build a business, but to create a system, okay, that again is repeatable processes that generate a predictable outcome. So if you're a person who is trying to create something where you want to be faster with your editing and your mastering, the job here is for you to start to look at how do I create a system? And a system is just a series of events, okay? A series of events that lead uh, to a predictable outcome, right? That's a system. For, for uh, a great example of a, an amazingly complicated system that works ama- like incredible is a car. Think about that. It's a series of systems that all work together so that you can get on there, turn turn it on, and it takes you wherever you want to go. That's an amazing system, right? And to the point where all look at look at all the things that are in it, all right. And one person can operate it with barely any uh, any knowledge or you know any abilities. I mean, think about it. It's amazing. Okay, and yet you get this incredible outcome, and you don't have to be, you know, you know, Andretti or whatever, <laughs> right, to drive a to drive a car. So, the idea here is that your job and my job is to create these systems that will allow us to manage our business in order to grow it not just to work day after day after day in it, doing the things over and over again. Does that make sense? Because if we do the same, if if we just continuously work at our business, then we've created a job. But if we build a business with the idea that we are creating repeatable processes with predictable outcomes, that is, I'm telling you, is the key to greater success. I have to tell you, you know, 
um, with what I've done in my business, it is definitely not perfect by any means. But I definitely like when it comes to social media too, you know, I've created systems, right, where I do X, Y, Z. And those systems move people to another place and that place moves people to another place. And, you know, the system works, Uh, you know, I mean, and when I mean by it works, it means like it allows people to find me and for me to find them by doing a specific set of things like podcasts, like you're listening right now to YouTube videos, to um, blog posts, to, uh, you know, just regular posts on social media, or the systems of using these other websites like Fiverr and um, Voice Realm and Voice Jungle to, you know, get yourself out there, uh, sending emails, but, but, but everything that you do, right? Like, for example, sending emails, Let's say you want, let's say you're like, you're like, you know what? I don't care anymore. I want to get business. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to blow everybody's socks off. I'm going to do a thousand. I'm going to send a thousand emails a month. Okay. A thousand emails a month. That's 12,000 a year. I know I'm going to get business if I send a thousand emails a month. That's wonderful. But here's the rub. How do you send a thousand emails a month and be able to do anything else? That's a lot of emails, (laughs) right? I mean, you're talking at least 250 emails a week. And if you, you know, now you could say, well, Anthony, it's not that bad, right? Because if you try to systemize that, you could say, okay, well, how can I reduce the time and use, you know, other things to grow, right? I could buy an email list every week, 250 emails a week. I buy that email list. I could buy from Upwork, Guru, Fiverr. You know, people do that all the time. I give my keywords, they send it. I send out the emails. I could even use a piece of software like Mailshake. And, you know, that'll send it out. It'll track it for me. They'll even send follow-ups. That's great. Do do you see how now all of these things are beginning to fall into a system, right? Like Thursday, the week before, I send out 250 emails. I place an order with so-and-so for this amount of emails based on these keywords. I get my list on Friday. All right. On Sunday, I upload uh, all of those emails to go out on my platform, Mailshake, like for example, uh, and uh, Mailchimp is a free one, right? And it sends all of them out on Monday, and then I have a three-week follow-up email, and then a two-week follow-up email if they don't respond. I can set all that up, and that's all set up. Uh, I, I can set it up one time in Mailshake. And it takes care of all of that and it, it 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 collects that data for me, sends out the emails. Then the next Thursday, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. If someone responds to me, then I put them into a new category. They go into another section on Mailshake, right, where it's like warm clients or leads, okay? Then from that, I have a spreadsheet, right, that I put them into that spreadsheet that now I know there's a, there is a possible customer or I don't send them the extra follow-up email like, hey, I don't know if you got this type of email. And now from there, they go into a new list where I send them a email or a um, email newsletter every month so that I am always on the front, I'm always there on their mind in case they ever need somebody. And I'm actually targeting the best people I can OK, and that list grows and grows and grows. You know, first I got a couple people, then I got 20 people, then I've got 50 people, then I got 100 people, then 500 people, 1,000 people now on this list of perfectly curated leads that would possibly use my service because they've contacted me and told me that they could use my service possibly in the future. So I'm sending out an email every month or so to them just as a nice newsletter or just as an email saying, hey, it's me. You know what I mean? Such and you know, this, this happened this month. It was really great. Uh, I just wanted to say hello. And, you know, if you need anything, we're running a special at this time, you know, uh, you know, happy, you know, whatever holiday it is, blah, blah, blah. Right. But do, do you see how this becomes a system. This is a series of events that you can repeat, right? Again, it's repeatable processes with predictable outcomes. Okay. Now I just laid out a whole entire system for you, but here's the crazy thing. Because you have a system like that, right? Guess what? You don't have to do it because you have created something that technically someone else could do for you. Do you see how liberating that is? Do you see how you can leverage 
other people's time, other people's money. You know, and I always say OPT, OPM, other people's time, other people's money. Because there comes a point, right? I know you guys know, right? There comes a point where we can't do any more with our time. I mean, we're limited. We have 24 hours a day. We've got to sleep for some time. I can tell you, you can go you can go for a couple years with very little sleep, but it catches up to you. I promise you. Trust me. It catches up to you. Okay? Uh, especially the older you get. It's a lot harder. And but but these sit but so you create a system like this and it works on its own. Do you see what I mean? And you place somebody within that system doing what you need them to do. And you know what? Guess what? We're freelancers. Well, there's other freelancers, there's other VAs, virtual assistants out there who would do these simple things for you. I mean, you could simply set up a separate Gmail account, right, that you have access to and your VA has access to, but it's not a personal account so that, you know, so it's not something that is any, you have to worry about, but you can run your marketing through that. I mean, that's just one system that then allows you to leverage a thousand emails a month. Okay, and you're not even doing it. Okay, yes. Do you have to pay the person? Well, of course you do. But 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 if you do, you know, if you are getting, if you're making tons of money paying someone a fair wage, okay, for quadruple or, you know, I don't even, you know, quadruple the amount of return, my goodness, it's well worth it. And your time. So when I'm talking about systems, I'm talking about processes, this can be done all sorts of things. It doesn't even need to have a person. It can be done through your DAW, setting up specific racks, meaning um, uh, predetermined settings that you save within your system that when you are done doing your recording, you literally hit a button and it runs through all those processes for you so that you don't have to go to each voiceover and do something over the like do tons of work over and over again okay that's what you should be striving for and and if you find that no matter how good you put your system something is still not right well then maybe it's your equipment maybe it's your space like building all of this stuff out it's a journey right it doesn't just happen overnight and and you have to understand that uh, you know, like, and you know my story, right? I started with a forty dollars microphone, and some packing blankets and PVC pipe, and I started there, and I got work, but that was definitely not the end of my journey. That was the beginning. I had to constantly worry about what my audio sound like, what was the issue, because there was all sorts of issues. I had, you know, noise because I was next to the kitchen and the refrigerator was always running. I didn't have enough um, padding and stuff because I was in the middle of a room with wooden floors and nothing on the walls. And I had this hobo fort set up around me that I had to put up and take down. So it couldn't be so bulky that I just shoved everything in there all the time. It had to be kind of portable, but it needed to it needed to be able to still stop extra you know noise coming in. I mean, this was a lot. Right. So then then there was the top of the microphone. I had a ninety nine dollar interface, which is, again, nothing wrong with these things. But what I'm telling you, I've realized over time is that your equipment, your space, it matters so much to your problems. There's only really so much that you can do in post production. You, I mean, you know, you, I mean, what I mean by that is there th- there's no substitute for having an incredible recording and an incredible space. You know, like, uh, and, and yes, we all can't have that right off the bat, of course, but that should be what you're working for. And that in itself is another system because it reduces the time and all the things that you have to be able to do yourself, right? So once you build out a studio in all fairness, you could have literally someone come and record and have quality, like a perfect example. I'm just saying perfect example is my son. Right. Like he just literally got an, a, a job from Japan for two hundred and twenty dollars. So now he's made, you know, three hundred and fifty dollars in the last two weeks as a 12 year old doing voiceover. But here's the thing. He is benefiting because of everything that I've set up. OK. And if 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 this hadn't been done, 
right? The audio wouldn't be top quality. There wouldn't be the uh, systems in place for him to be able to bypass all of the things like that you and I had to or ha- having to or had to go through in order to get us here. All right. Now, the 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 work ethic stuff aside, I'm just talking about the idea that there's a system here, right? Because it's like the studio, right? It's like you walk, you'd walk into a studio, there's an engineer there, everything's done, you just record and leave like they used to. But we know that's not the way it works anymore. But we can still set up that type of system at home now. But you should always be striving to figure out that system, that best you know, predictable system or those repeatable processes that create predictable outcomes. All right. I think I've beat that enough. I hope that this session today, this podcast 177 has been somewhat helpful. Uh, Thank you as always for listening. Hey, on a side note, uh, really excited, and I, I'm actually I'm ridiculously excited about what we're doing. We're um, really pushing uh, the excitement on our demos. We've been I, I've been doing some amazing demos, character demos, commercial demos, audiobook demos, uh, explain it to, uh, podcast. You know, whatever whatever demos you have, we've been doing tons of demos for people. I'll have a link below if you're looking for a demo. It's affordable. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that, you know, that I have a, a, a group of people or Andrew, a, a group of people, it's Andrew, Andrew and I <laughs> do the demos and, uh, it's exciting. And also what's really exciting is we're pushing, um, or I'm just found some new things and putting together, which I'll be offering soon video demos, which I'm so like just ridiculously excited about because I think nowadays, you know, even with the emails I send out to people, you guys, I literally always put my videos in there. I don't just put a, an MP3. I always put videos of different demo spots that I have, you know, like actual videos um, of me, you know, voicing the videos. Uh, and I, I get such better results. So anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that about the demos. If you're looking for one, you could check that out at Avio's Journey or Avio's Journey website or the link below. And besides that, you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And good luck to everybody going back to school or if you're back to school already with your kids. Bless you because this is going to be one heck of a school year. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.